the grand finals, ladies and gentlemen, the last best of seven, the last match of this tournament. And it has been a great tournament up to this point. And I'd, of course, like to thank every last one of you for coming to watch it. And I really hope you've enjoyed it so far. A big shout out, especially, of course, the Europeans that somehow are still watching this. <laughs> uh, the ones that are watching the rebroadcast, you're awesome. The ones that are watching the main broadcast, you're insane. But I, <laughs> I like you anyway, and you can stay. And I really hope that you enjoy the grand finals. Because that's what's coming next, folks. This is it. This is what it all came down to. Flash versus Hero in a best of seven grand finals in the Sandisk Shoutcraft Invitational. We're going to take a break. When we come back, that's exactly what we're going to bring you. Do not go anywhere. Hi, my name's John Bain, and it's my pleasure to thank Sandisk for bringing us top-notch StarCraft II entertainment at the Sandisk Shoutcraft Invitational. When I'm not casting StarCraft II, it's my job to critique PC games, and to do that, I need the best hardware. One of the best upgrades that you can get for your PC gaming experience is a solid-state drive, so I'd like to encourage you to check out the Sandisk Extreme Pro SSD. It's engineered for super-fast read and write speeds and consistent high performance 24-7. What does that mean for your games? Faster load times, faster boot times, faster install times. Less downtime, more game time. Plus, they're easy to install, run cool, and are both virtually silent and energy efficient. If you're worried about reliability, no need. SanDisk backs it all up with a 10-year warranty. Game without limits when you step up to the consistent high performance of SanDisk Extreme Pro.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's here. Or as Artosis would often say, it's time. <laughs> it is time, Total Biscuit. It is time for a best of seven finals between the greatest gamer who has ever lived, Flash, and Hero from Siege Antis. One of the big fan favorites in the world, one of the best Protosses there are. This is just happiness all. That's, that's the best way to describe this. This is happiness. Guys, get out there, spread the word, get on Reddit, Team Liquid, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you have, and let people know this is about to happen. And please, please do, because they will... Sorry, I'm just getting a message from someone randomly here. <laughs> with a Korean name. Never mind. Anyway, yes, please do talk about this on Twitter. At Sandisk is, of course, the sponsor of this tournament. I'm sure they would like to know your thoughts. And, of course, hashtag Sandisk is what we're currently using for discussion. So if you put a hashtag Sandisk in your message, that means your message goes in with all the other messages and you get to read what the audience is saying right now. So please do let people know because this is this is literally esports history. Flash has never played a TVP best of seven. And Hero hasn't either. <laughs> well, uh, it's about time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing this to us, Sandisk and Total Biscuit. This is going to be fantastic. I cannot wait to start. The first map going to be Frost, a great macro-esque map to start this match out on. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right, they confirm ready. Uh, Crank was obviously confused, but it, he is ready to go now. The countdown begins. Frost will be the first map in the final best of seven series of the Sandisk Shoutcraft Invitational. Hopefully the best best of seven series in the Sandisk Shoutcraft Invitational. A TVP for the ages with a lot of money on the line. All right, I am just so pumped about this. I have no idea who's going to end up winning that last series. Kind of crazy. Didn't go the way I thought it would. So I'm not even going to hazard a guess as to how this one's going to go. Probably for the best. Let's just... Mm -hmm experience it yes <laughs> it's gonna happen folks here it is first map in this best of seven grand finals with a lot of money on the line seven thousand dollars in total will be split between these two players as to who gets the lion's share of it well that's entirely up to them to the northeast position in the red trunks playing terran the ultimate weapon kt rolsters flash and his opponent, in the bottom right of our map, CJ Antis' real ace, is none other than Hero. Smiling assassin. Will he be smiling after this, is the question, when he walks away with $4,500, or will, of course, he be sent packing by God himself? <laughs> now, talking about being sent packing by God himself, the stats yes. are not in Hero's favor in this match. Really? No, they are not. Turns out, the last time and the only time that Hero actually beat Flash in a televised competitive match was actually on day one of the Sandisk Shoutcraft Invitational. That was it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that one game. That and one that, game. That, He's never hey, beaten him in Pro League. Map. To yeah, be fair, it, was. it was on this map. <laughs> He's never beaten him in Pro League, and I was very surprised by that. But I looked at Ligolak, and it's like 6-1 in favor of flash wow wow um i that's actually like very very surprising to me yeah, i wasn't expecting me. it yeah um you know i did see their very recent match in pro league uh, on king sejong station and hero had a big lead and really looked like he was going to take it home and then kind of suicided up flash's ramp and probably still should have won but it was flash so flash took it um <laughs> yeah so you know Obviously, close games, but the fact that Flash has such a record against him is quite shocking. It is. But, of course, we should not necessarily put too much importance on stats for best of one Pro League matches. Because mm. they don't really mean that much. I think the best of three that they played in the group stage was far more telling. Yeah, I, I would say so. And that did end up 2-1 for Flash. It did. Uh, the one loss, as we were saying, was on this map against a Nexus first. Mm -hmm. And this game... To kind of hedge his bets against the Nexus first, Flash has gone for Command Center first. So we already see a few mind games, but of course, Hero, he's going Nexus first anyways. Well, we're certainly not going to see any attacking for a while. <laughs> That's pretty much guaranteed at this point. 
the CC and the Nexus, we could we could start off with a really great macro game, which I am definitely not going to complain about. Oh, certainly not. I'm actually really excited to see this because that was the game where we're like, wow, Hero just played perfectly. There was nothing Flash could do. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Flash has opened on this map with a command center first instead of a Reaper opening shows a big nod towards the fact that he knows that there was nothing that he could really do, that Hero would just play perfectly. So he's he's kind of made it so that Hero doesn't just get a free win. Well, it's, of course, not free, but, you know, if Whoa. Hero can play a perfect game like that, that's... Ooh, my God, what are we seeing here? Flash, you... What are you doing? He's so brilliant. Oh, my God, he's so brilliant. <laughs> this is... Like, think about this, right? You're going command center first. Your opponent's going nexus first. To beat something that's greedy, the best way to beat it is to be a little bit more greedy. And the way that he's choosing to be a little bit more greedy with this third command down in the bottom left, the odds of Hero scouting that anytime soon, almost none. Minimal. Definitely minimal. Yeah. He may smell some things a bit off if he gets a scout of the base, which considering mm -hmm. he is going for a Stargate... The Oracle could see quite a lot, and then he could say, "I I don't think that that is of that is your full bank. I really think there's 400 minerals missing somewhere. It's possible." And then he yep. starts to go and look around the usual places. But you're right, finding that is very unlikely. Yeah, you really have to be on top of your game to figure out that 400 minerals are missing from a command center first build like this yeah, when you yeah. went Nexus first, because totally. these builds don't line up very often. Uh, but Ooh, Flash you know, on top got into the base, which is really Ooh. surprising. He's not going to see the Stargate. He does see a Robo, though. Yeah, well, you know, seeing that Robo, uh, I guess that's good. But he sees he sees the timing of it that's not done yet. So he might be able to infer, just as uh, this Oracle may be able to infer, there's a missing command center that an Oracle could be coming. Yeah, he he may be able to guess that. Thankfully, he did go for the the double kind of raw barracks into another barracks, which gives him enough marines to fend the oracle off. But as we've seen, Stim is very late. So, uh, oh, it, Flash is going for a fourth CC. I'm pretty sure this is designed as a fake to to be seen, you know, <laughs> to hide the fact that that ninja expo exists. But Flash is taking damage in his main mineral line here. The Oracle's being driven away. Will uh, The airspace is not very good, of course, but Oracles are really damn fast. And this is good surgical precision here from Hero. Look at that. Seven kills. Jeez, eight, eight kills. Nine, and he's out of there. Oh, my so God. That good. was such a good Oracle. And yeah. right now, 35 SCVs to 50. You know, Flash took an early advantage by hiding this command center in the bottom left, but... Hero just gave himself the lead off of just great Oracle Micro. Yeah, he did. He really did. And I, I, I think after that, Flash actually must complete this command center. We don't even know if it was a fake in the first place, but mm. I mean, it seemed like it was. Like, why would you need a fourth against <laughs> a two base Protoss that's now just started his third base? But this is going to be interesting because Hero now thinks that he's the, the third command center is about to finish. And of course, he managed to delay it. So Hero's going to be feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, I, I would definitely say so. He's got to be looking at it and saying, wow, I killed a lot of SCVs there. My third base is going to be almost as fast as his third base. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to have all the units I need. I'm totally fine. But that base in the bottom left, the longer that stays there, the scarier it is. Oh, my God. Flash, you greedy. That's the fourth orbital. Like, he's not even thinking about a planetary. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 no. I was thinking maybe he turns that into a planetary. But that's a bit of a giveaway because, like, Flash would never do that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do on ladder because I'm scared and can't deal with more than have, more than two bases. Flash would never <laughs> do something like that. But that's going to be four mules at a time. That is the greediest, the greediest I have ever seen from a Terran player against Protoss yeah. here. But... This Oracle's going to continue to do work, man. Thankfully, the missile turret is up, but uh, it is being annoying. Yeah, this is uh, this is a cool game, man. I'm really yeah. enjoying this so far. That Oracle, though, is getting so much value, so much bang for its buck. Uh, Flash has to be a little bit frustrated about that. But I feel like Hero might just get caught off guard when he walks across the map thinking that he should be ahead. And then it's like, Flash, really? How do you have this much money? It's starting to get close, man. Hero does have a pylon, which is kind of sitting in a very, 
Very interesting location. It could see something if there's, I don't know, maybe some weird mist rally or something along those lines. But it, it, it's always very tense when a product starts to creep closer and closer to a ninja expo. He has no idea it's there, but he might eventually find it by accident. Flash's economy right now with four mules is ridiculous. He's banking <laughs> over 2,400 minerals a minute at the moment. He His production should start flying any moment. He's currently only on five racks. It could go a lot higher than that. He knows it. He's already going double starport because hmm. he knows Hero's tendencies when it comes to the Colossus there. Yeah, he's going to have just uh, an insane maxed out army really, really quickly here with tons of Vikings, tons of Medivacs, Marines, Marauders to boot, just everything all over the place. So going to be tough, but Hero is really good in situations like this as well. He's extremely good at his defense. He does have his double Ebays up, or rather, sorry, his double Forges up uh, to fight the double Ebay. So he's still, he's going to be all right. It's going to be very hard to break him still. Hmm. Yeah, well, and Flash doesn't have a crazy army out in the front here, and actually, I think kind of needs to leave. Definitely needs to leave. He's going to lose Medivacs if he doesn't. Those Blink Stalkers are going to harass this all the way home. And this is that's the three Colossus push. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of units coming out here, but Flash's production kind of wasn't quite there yet. So even though he's pulling in a lot of money, he was struggling to kind of spend it all, and now his army's being picked apart piecemeal on the way back, and has overstimmed, seriously overstimmed. Yeah, that was uh, quite a nice little chase sequence there from Hero to be able to pick off so much and force so many stims. And, ooh, a nice tag from that uh, Oracle, sure. but does get taken down, finally. Yeah, finally. it was going to happen. I mean, it couldn't harass the mineral lines anymore because of the missile turret, so it might as well get a little bit of an eye on it. Uh, the medevac count concerns me greatly. And, of course, this revelation, it's like Flash almost, like, is saying to Hero here, it's like, look at how many Vikings I got. Like, he took his one Viking, mm. he could have actually moved that one Viking away, but he chose not to, which makes me feel that was deliberate. He is saying, come at me, this, I know you can't. I have too mm. much. Yeah, he's basically advertising for free that he has double Stargates, uh, yeah. or Star Ports, rather, just producing nonstop. Uh, not going to stop Hero, though. He is walking out into the middle of the map. I wonder if he's actually thinking about poking here. If he does, I he's going to be in for a surprise. I... I mean, I can't even say that that's a surprise. I mean, he knows yeah. the Vikings are there. It seems suicidal to do that, especially with the airspace on this map. Vikings can easily flank from the right in that position, and they will kill Colossus really fast. Mm. Uh, it, it almost seems like he's baiting in some way. But I, you think I, he wants I, Flash to come out and fight him here? Yeah, yeah, I think maybe. But uh, it also could be to defend this fourth that he's putting down here. And he wants to posture on the map and just be scary, just puff out his chest a little bit to make sure that Flash doesn't go and attack him. Yeah, you know what? That's actually, that's a really good point. I think that might be right straight on to what's happening here. By standing out in the middle, he kind of keeps Flash on the defense. Oh. Notice, he, he, with that fourth base, he's warping these pylons everywhere. Has a whole bunch of DTs here as well, mm. ready to sneak in. Yeah, decent amount of EMP available, though. So if this actually fights in the army, even if there isn't a scan, then that stuff could be spotted. But there's not a lot of defense in this mineral line, so that stuff can get picked off very easily. Flash is now kind of caught out here. He's in the time warp. The DTs make their way into that mineral line and just wreck it completely. And there's no reinforcements, really. He's going to have to stim back home, and he's going to lose that whole mineral line in seconds. Oh, that was beautiful play there by Hero, luring the army up, sending these DTs. Now, sending them into the main base. Flash's entire army stimming and running up. This may give Hero a timing attack. I think it will, and there's not enough medevacs here. So, Hero is in a good spot here. He's sending Zealots to the third base, and now he's going to attack with his main force and try to take on the main. Of course, Flash's army is big, but that's a lot of red health marines. And Flash's army is actually kind of all over the place. He needs to bring it together pretty much immediately. Those marines just melt completely to charging Zealots. But the Viking count is extremely high. The Colossus get melted immediately. The stem forward here by Flash on red health. He doesn't care. He's going to fight anyway. Well, these Zealots pushing in, and they're kind of putting themselves into little choke points, but they are starting to deal with a lot of these ground forces. The Vikings! They, oh, lands the Vikings here. And, of course, he has so many, he will wipe out those Zealots very quickly. That's pretty good. You know, Flash, Flash was kind of pulled to pieces by that because that was a brilliant three-pronged maneuver by... Hero to draw his opponent's army out, force an overstim, because I think he identified the fact that the there were so few medevacs. So he's like, oh, you got to stim back. you got to stim back. I'm going to draw you out, and then I'm going to force you to stim your army, because you need to respond, otherwise your economy will die. Of course, uh, Hero's, Hero's still kind of confused, because he still only sees three bases. It's like, you, what? where's your army coming from here? <laughs> 
Yeah, how are you remaxing this quickly? That's a little bit odd. Your your army is so valuable as well. Look at this, a mm. lot of medevacs being produced. Uh, he's still making Vikings, just a crazy amount, 15 out at the moment. Lovely AP And uh, by with Flash. just one Colossus, like 15 Vikings is almost just overkill. Yeah. Like that little move there by Flash, you saw the DTE on PD. He did lose the Ghost in the process, but he killed two DTEs before they were able to harass that mineral line again, so I guess that was all right. His Viking count, as you said, is very, very high. The Colossus count, of course, will not be rebuilt now because the Viking count is so ridiculous. And I'm actually kind of surprised that he's still building Vikings. The fight is on once again. Flash is taking out the Colossus very easily, but look at how many charging Zealots are in the mix here. Flash does have a slight upgrade lead, though, and his stun is stepping very well against this. Oh god, and a lot of his Vikings They're actually all gonna die. Yeah, on that yeah. left hand side. Absolutely brutal. He will hold off those Zealots, but that was a ton of Vikings lost. That's really painful. And now Hero can finally go back into Colossus. Yeah, that was unnecessary there by Flash. He, he shouldn't have had them there. There was no reason. Uh, he knew all the Colossus were dead, so that's the time you just pull those Vikings back. There's no reason for them to be there anymore. And he's going to lose yet more here, which is unnecessary. And I'm still very concerned about his oversteering. But now we are actually getting the Flash kind of count of medevacs that I'm used to. You remember back when he first started playing Heart of the Swarm, where his medevac mm. count was so ridiculously high? Now he's kind of getting there. Yeah, Flash is known for wanting to have 10 plus medevacs in yeah. this matchup. It's crazy to see, but really works out well for him. And as he does get it for those numbers and stays maxed out against a confused hero, mm. uh, he is gaining more and more of an edge. Confused hero indeed. Hero should be is saying to himself, this, this is impossible. I, I don't care how good your macro is. You're on three bases. There's no way your army could possibly be this big. And there's no way you could possibly have those upgrades. But a flank comes in from the side here. And we've got the fight going on once again. The Colossus taken out. But Flash with a huge amount of units. He's going to kite these Zealots very effectively. He's going to break through that. And then I think he can stim forward, surge forward, and try and smash this. What Immortal Falls. Second Immortal Falls. So many Marauders. Hero's army melts. Hero blinking back, trying to get away right now while he warps in some more units. He has to be just scratching his head right now. How did you do it? How is he doing this? How did you do it? They're on red health. But I think this warp in may very well be enough to clean this up. The reinforcements are not really streaming across. He might actually have to lift up and go, but his medevacs have been torn from the sky. I love the target fire there from Hero, realizing, hey, you know, these are on red. I know you need this, but I'm still very concerned about Hero's ability to stay in the game. A fifth base is now established here for Flash versus the four base Hero. Hero's still on 70 probes, though, so he's certainly not out of this yet. Yeah, he's still fighting. He's still making more Colossi. He has a couple out. He's not about to die right this second, but as Flash is going to hit another max, that's just like, I mean, <laughs> I'll be very surprised if Hero doesn't hop into the replay after this and be like, I wouldn't what blame the him. hell? What How is going on here? <laughs> yeah, how did you do it? And he still hasn't spotted. Wow, I think he might now. Is Flash, I, Flash has got to be doing this on purpose. Like, look at where this SCV is right in front of that pylon. He's almost mined out there. I... It's almost like he's taunting Hero with that SCV. Mm -mm. Well, if Hero tries to send his army to the bottom left, that's going to be all Flash needs to roll over his uh, new base. But I think Hero has to stay at home. He's way down in supply, down by over 30 at the moment, despite having a really solid economy all game long. Yeah. A really tough situation here for Hero. How does he, how does he walk out and attack ever? With great difficulty. I mean, his upgrades mm -hmm. are good, and he is starting to work on the shield upgrade as well, which is obviously not the best thing against Terran, especially against L11 Ghost Terran. It's actually going to be 12 Ghosts. My god, the Ghost count for Flash is getting crazy here. The Viking count is very, very low, but even with that, with that amount of Ghosts and a good amount of Marauders, it almost doesn't matter. Well, uh, you know, he... That's that's the super late game of yeah. TVP. That's what I really like to see top end Terrans go for. A lot of Vikings, a lot of Ghosts. Just pick apart all their splash units and then win through your micro. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's looks like what he wants to try to do. But Hero has a lot of gateways right now. Yeah, he does. can reinforce really quickly. And uh, sometimes if you kind of over make the tech units, huge swaths of Zealots can be warped in and help to run over those units that maybe aren't as good head-to-head -head against gateway units. Charging Zealots with 3-3 are ridiculously cost-effective and very easy to bring into the fight, you know? And you don't really have to do much with them, either. You just point them in the general direction of the enemy, and they just start screaming like madmen and slashing their swords, and really, things just come to pieces. They're torn mm. apart, so they're a great unit to have. They don't require a lot of brains. No, they certainly do not. 
Now we do finally have some Archons. Uh, looks like it's going to be morphed here. Maybe get some feedbacks as well from Hero. Doesn't have Psy Storm yet though, so that is an issue. Uh, Psy mm. Storm going to be something yeah. if this game goes a lot longer that he definitely needs. Yeah, that's pretty significant, actually. And Flash knows that base is there, and he's going to crush it. There's no doubt about that. The question is, what is Hero's response to that? If he fights dead on the Seven Colossus, that's a pretty good number. But like you said, without Storm, it's entirely possible that Flash wins that fight anyway. And even if he doesn't, he's, he's still mining pretty well. His income is good. It's not as good because this ninja base is now pretty much mined out. Yeah, he, well, at least he's getting that other one going <laughs> with the planetary this time as well. Uh, you know, one thing I'm a little bit nervous about here, Seven Colossus, as you were pointing out, that's against just 13 Vikings. He had mm. more Vikings when there was one Colossus out than he has right now. Yeah, he, he let go of all those for no reason. In the meantime, this really powerful run by just wiped the mineral line of that third, fourth. I'm not even sure what base that is at this point. I think it was his fourth mm. base. So that's pretty annoying. He's even killing supply depots, which, as we know, is the one thing that really sets Flash off. <laughs> yeah, he does not like to lose his depots. Goes up, saves most of them. So that's good. I don't think he's tilting quite yet. Somehow... Somehow, Hero hasn't even seen the second ninja base that's in the natural of the...